Asthma is one of those things we associate with childhood, yet one in 12 adults are also affected. We think of it as mild, and yet it can be life-threatening, which is why it is so important to be able to recognize the signs and the symptoms. Over to Dr. Salia Asan. There are nearly five and a half million people with asthma in the UK, and every year around a thousand of them will lose their lives to an asthma attack. But if more people knew the warning signs, some of these deaths could be prevented. My brother has had asthma all his life. My father got it as an adult and has needed intensive care. His brother, my uncle, died of it. That's why I'm so keen to talk about the signs and symptoms of asthma so that people can spot a dangerous attack quickly and save lives. Asthma is a condition that affects the airways, the tubes which carry air in and out of the lungs. If these become irritated, that can lead to inflammation of the airways, the muscles tighten and the tubes narrow. And this causes shortness of breath, wheezing, and it can even lead to a life-threatening asthma attack, needing hospitalisation. We still don't know what causes asthma in the first place, but for those who have it, there are many things that can trigger an episode. Pollen, house dust, animals, hormones, pollution, and even emotions and stress. Another surprisingly common trigger is exercise, but despite that, doctors actually recommend it for asthma, especially swimming, as it can calm and regulate breathing. So I've come to an outdoor swimming club in Kent. I've dipped my toe in and the water's freezing. A few of the members here have asthma. Describing their experiences helps others recognise the symptoms. It feels like a tightening in your chest. It doesn't matter how many times you breathe in or how deeply you breathe in. It stops you steeping. I cough a lot in the night. My breath shorten and I think I'm not getting the air out of my lungs and therefore I try and find it hard to get the air back in again. To show the non-sufferers in the group what asthma actually feels like, we've set up a demonstration with the help of Dr John Dickinson and a device that impedes your breathing in a way that mimics asthma. When the non-asthmatics put this in their mouth, will find it pretty easy to breathe in, yeah. but they're going to find it pretty hard to breathe out, and that's what happens in asthma. Just think how long it takes to empty your lungs if you think about that asthma, asthma response. And you can see how, how easy it is to get panicky when you're feeling like that, to start hyperventilating. Oh, that's horrible. That is actually <laughs> horrible because you can't get the breath out and you, you already wanted to breathe back in. Exactly. You feel how much longer it takes to breathe out. What did you think? <laughs> it's hideous. <laughs> yeah, it's hideous. It's horrible. <laughs> that's using all your muscles. That's, exactly. that's huge exercise. All right? Horrible. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm having a lot of sympathy and empathy for you guys <laughs> right now. I really am. Anyone who has asthma should always carry an inhaler, a spray containing a muscle relaxant, to open up the airways and ease breathing. If you see someone struggling with asthma, you can assist by keeping them calm, because this can help bring their breathing under control. But sometimes, if the symptoms continue, things can become much more serious. Every 10 seconds, someone is having a life-threatening asthma attack. So what are the warning signs? The person is extremely breathless, perhaps struggling to speak. Their symptoms are getting worse. Their asthma inhaler isn't helping. Children may complain of a tummy ache. If an asthma attack continues untreated, the lack of oxygen can be fatal, but there are things you can do to help. So if someone is having an asthma attack, follow these instructions. Keep them and yourself calm. Sit them upright. Make sure that you've located their inhaler. Get them to take one puff of their inhaler every 30 to 60 seconds. It can feel like a long time in between, but it's the right thing. Repeat up to a maximum of 10 puffs. Take another puff of that, please. <sighs> Excellent. Well done. If they didn't have their inhaler with them on that day, what would you do then? Call 999 straight away. You should also call an ambulance if they don't feel better after 10 puffs or if they're a child. 
If in an extreme situation the patient stops breathing and their heart stops, you must start CPR immediately and don't stop until the ambulance arrives. Okay. Nice and easy. Nice and calm. If you have asthma, learn to recognise your triggers and always carry your inhaler. Make a plan with your GP of what to do if you have an asthma attack. And for the rest of us, we should learn to recognise the warning signs of an asthma attack, particularly for children. Wheezing, shortness of breath, they're unable to finish a sentence without having to breathe, and sometimes children complain of a tummy ache.